Welcome to Secret Levels. We're doing a little bit of a reboot, because it's 2019 and why not? This year, we're kicking off with a big discussion about video game news, but first, we've got to introduce ourselves. My name's Mike, and you can find me at twitch.tv slash foxgeyser. I'm a retired Resident Evil speedrunner and hanging out in the variety section these days. I'm joined by three of my favorite human beings, as always, Derek. Hello, my name's Derek, or the Beta Cat. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, and sometimes... I'm in the Mario Party secret level character thingy to find me, maybe me. Just gonna unlock everything. It's true, I've been lying <laughs> six times. And Tony. Hello, my name is Tony, also known as Tony2Tiger. Uh, I am a variety streamer, and uh, I stream a lot of Dead by Daylight, and I'm looking forward to some games coming up in the future, too. Yeah, and we are joined by our newest addition to the main roster with this wonderful rebuilding the man who gave Mike Tyson the punk rock experience right to the chin, <laughs> Mr. Ian. Yeah. What's up, punk rock Ian? Retro game streamer, part-time alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So today we are going to be covering a couple different topics, as you can see right down there. Talking about mobile games, the PS1 Classic price drop, Nintendo possibly leaving the console market, and Bungie divorcing Activision. Mm -hmm. This ought to be a good one. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of sparked the whole Marvel? Marvel? I'll get there. I'll get there. Bonus topic! (laughs) Bonus topic. We're doing it today, boys. So what what sparked the whole mobile games thing is the the announcement of Alien Blackout, the I guess follow up to Alien Isolation. Boo! Oh. <laughs> Are you going for Alien Blackout or Alien Isolation? Because if it's Isolation, we're gonna have some words, Tony. <laughs> you know which one I'm going for, <laughs> Alien Blackout. So. And actually, um. We have a quote here from the article from IGN. Blackout is a standalone game that shares Amanda Ripley as a main character, but it is not related. Two or a sequel of Isolation. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> I thought that was like the whole like thing for it. I thought it was supposed to be that. That's really, yeah. How do you even? How do you do that? You have one of the most successful horror games of the last generation, and you decide to make that. You know, <laughs> there's some other quotes in there about it being like a Five Nights at Freddy's clone. It's like, why? I understand mm-hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's is <laughs> super popular. At least it was like two or three years ago. Why? Why not just make an actual sequel? <laughs> You're not. <laughs> you know, the person who probably dev this game is actually Slowpoke, the Pokemon. <laughs> like you tell them a joke and then like they catch up years later. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, look at this new game. Is that Five Nights at Freddy-esque? Yeah, it's still popular, right? <laughs> this, this is the guy that, that played Alien Isolation, got caught by the Xenomorph, and only after he reloaded his save did he realize that he lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Now, you know, it's not to discount the mobile gaming scene. It's, it's huge. There's no denying it. There's a lot of money to be made in it, but that's really about it. I can't... Personally, don't ever see something like like a mobile game being able to compete with something like a console or pc game mm-hmm. absolutely it's just not, not the same no. I, mean, I mean yeah i've never really like messed with mobile games i've like played maybe like two or three like they're they're time yeah. killers i don't consider yeah. myself actually gaming when i'm playing them it's just like i'm at it's work a distraction yeah exactly yeah 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 that's um like they're you know, majority of them seem to be like clicker games or idle games where you just tap the screen really fast and that, that's not gameplay. If mm-hmm. I wanted that, I could just like set my mouse to auto click something and get the same effect <laughs> on another game. Just <laughs> right. sit back. I've won. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's basically how you play the idle games. Start it up, load it up once, open your, your free five star rare character pack that everybody else got too and <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I want the game, guys. It's, it's not so, really a game, son. <laughs> and what's, so, do you what's, think? Oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. Beta. No, you go ahead. Uh, so, so, do you guys think that this is like going to be a continuing thing? Because you know, last BlizzCon, you know, the whole thing with mm. Diablo Immortal, like you yeah. know, that fucking caused a big uproar, and now this, like, 
it just I seems like no. they're going to keep going in this direction but at the yeah, same time it like, is going to happen nobody's nobody's ever happy about it when it happens it, it it's probably going yeah like they said it's, it's probably going to keep happening like there's no two ways about it it'll keep happening and fans will keep getting pissed off but i think until it gets to the point where where consumers as a whole look at it and go Mm-mm, no they ain't doing it that companies are still going to try to stick their foot in the wrong pond they're going to stick their foot into a murky pond full of bear traps and keep getting their toes bitten off because they're <laughs> stupid mm-hmm. it's but like, really this it isn't is. the way to go about it <laughs> this right. isn't what people want this isn't what people actually want and to me it seems like it may not be what the people want but for the company you have mm-hmm. to imagine that the yeah. the, oh, yeah. uh, the mobile games they're cheaper to produce cheaper to make and then you know, even if you're not marketing to your target audience, you're still going to be making a lot more money on return with it. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, sure that's how, absolutely true. You know, that, I'm not sure wise, how the isolation you know, sold. Insane. Do we know if it sold well the first game? At Alien oh Isol- yeah, Ace- yeah. Alien Isolation. What? Okay, it didn't sell well. I thought it sold. No, really I, well. I said, do we know if it did? Like, I, um, I was, I'm trying to look it up right now, but I can't really see yeah, the success of it. Well, another thing with mobile games yeah. is that it's a uh, continuous revenue. Because yeah. 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 the loot boxes, the in-game purchases, and like Tony says, they're cheap to make. You put in these mm-hmm. purchases, like skins, or maybe, as this guy quotes on Twitter, the alien has spotted you, but you are all out of energy. Buy five energy now for only $9.99. <laughs> 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 it's a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. Yeah. I mean, from a marketing standpoint, yeah, it's brilliant. It's genius, because you guys are right. There's, you know, this infinite roof of revenue that they're going to see from it i can't fault them for that that's a smart business decision especially taking into consideration you know what you said tony you know they're cheap to make they're easy to produce you just throw them up on you know google play and the app store mm-hmm. or, um you know the apple store and you know regardless of what it is because i mean this game's this game's going to blow up on mobile no matter what just because yeah. it's an aliens property i mm-hmm. guarantee it's going to be a smash hit whether people actually like it or not you know either out of curiosity or because they're fans or because they're the kind of fans that are really hardcore and don't care Mm -hmm. archer brings up a good point um in terms of mobile games there's a big factor now with the increase in quality of phones with the graphics capability of games are much more advanced which brings a lot of people in itself that's true that's That's absolutely true there's there's some stuff that i've seen on the phones that i look at i'm like what the it's like this can't be a phone game there's um Mm -hmm. Oh, what is it? CSR Classic Showroom. It's um, it's at its core, it's a drag racing game. But basically, mm-hmm. what you get to do is you get a car and you fix it up. You know, wheels, engine, everything. You you build, you get this junker and you build it up, and then you buy more cars and kind of do the same thing. And looking at it, it's a it's a gorgeous game. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a gorgeous game with a great frame rate, and it's fun. It's like this. This this doesn't seem like a phone game. You know, no. just visually, you'd look at it and think, okay, this this could have been like on, you know, the PS2 or maybe PS3. Yeah. Yeah, soon, like, the way phones are going, they're kind of stagnating a little bit in terms of what you could fit in a tiny device without making it pretty much a tablet in your hand. Yeah. And you now as te- technology grows, soon we're just going to have almost the equivalent of a Switch in our hand, but yeah. a mobile device, as a, like a phone. Yeah. And you'll be playing all the games you ever wanted. And I think that's why all these companies are going for that market and getting in there sooner rather than later so they can have, you know, the names for themselves on the mobile market, not just on desktop or yeah. uh, machines. Well, do you think, and Ginger, I see your comment and I do want to talk about that. Um, but in a mobile market, without, I think without branding in a certain way, Mm-hmm. They're, you know, even if they have their name out there, it's still going to be you know, people are just going to see the icon for the game. Yeah, there's one company, Glue, that just, you know, hoses out games, and they're actually fairly good ones for phones. And you always know it's one of theirs because they have their little, they have their icon, in, or their logo in the icon of the game. So at a glance, you can tell. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, there are some some companies that don't do that. Which I think what the point I'm trying to get to is, you know, people might gloss over it if they don't realize, hey, this is actually, you know, a Sega game or this is a, you know, 
Nintendo game, even mm-hmm. though they only have like what one or two mobile games that they've released. So I I hope they figure out the marketing thing. Didn't uh <laughs> didn't Sega like do something where they were like putting out like games on the phone and like Oh yeah. It was just like like a control on the touch screen, you use your thumbs, but you mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't like how yeah. that control was set up, but Yeah, for something like Sonic superimposed controls aren't very good <laughs> yeah, no. but let's let's touch on ginger's comment here a large example is a game called star wars galaxy of heroes which i had a lot of fun with yep, uh, I played that. yep fully animated strategy arena style game the fact that there's a massive that there is massive themes there obviously aids it but the graphics help a lot yeah the graphics were really good for it as a character's visuals are hugely developed and everything has an animation the cost of them in the game are high but people are willing to spend to unlock their favorite four characters it's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that again, it just goes back to like the target audience. It's like they're yeah. they're willing to pay for it, you know, whether it's because they're able to, you know, their parents' credit card or, <laughs> you know, they get they get addicted to it, and um, it just right. seems like that will always be where the most income is coming from. And it scares me for like the future of certain games and franchises, I guess. But, oh yeah, dude. Yeah. It's been like so many nightmare stories of like parents trying to sue these game companies because they don't make it well known or have some kind of blocking system where they get a bill from the Google Play Store that, hey, you just spent $6,000 on <laughs> Apple's in-game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that yeah. can also come down to the parents' fault, but still, like, that's a, that's an issue. Oh, yeah. that, that's mm-hmm. how much these kids are spending on these in-game purchases. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It is. I mean, it's also a good lesson if you're a parent out there to make sure your child knows better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's a that's a very optimistic thing to hope for. I think I at this point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it is very. Op- I, I hope so. Anyway, it's like the games fall off because people will become aware of it and don't want to be free to play. So the games will lose players. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm one of those people for sure. Where I'll play a game, and I'll I'd rather put in the time than spend the money. Yeah, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. It, it just like, depends yeah. on like how geared it is to like having to like spend actual money on it to like progress versus like the amount of time I'd have to put in to not have to do that. Mm-hmm. Depending yeah. on whether or not I choose to play, but I mean, there's tons of things that I've played like that where I'm like, I'd rather just I'll put the time in. I'm not spending the money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think some of it has bled over into the uh, the console market or mm-hmm. you know the the oh, main yeah. market um, specifically because I want to rag on Street Fighter Five a little bit, even though I love the game. I mean, you guys know that I love Street Fighter Five. I have my head mm-hmm. up its ass for the last like three months. Mm-hmm. But when Street Fighter Five came out, it was not. It was barely a Street Fighter game. Um, <laughs> it wasn't until later that they started adding extra modes into it. Mm-hmm. And you can make fight money to unlock the new season characters um, through doing like trials or survival mode or playing online. The problem with playing online is, you know, unless you win your fight, you don't get the fight money. And when you do get the fight money, like if you're playing casuals, you only get 50 fight money. That doesn't go anywhere. That's like five cents. <laughs> 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 and if you can't play online, then you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's. I don't think it will ever go away, because no, no, again, it's point. all it's all about the money and reoccurring revenue. Because also too, um, game companies are making a lot of money, but they're also starting to lose money because they always have to increase their workload. They have to increase the type of game they're making and all these hours. So. It's understandable where it starts to fall off later on, where revenue is just not meeting the goal. So that's where mm-hmm. reoccurring revenue comes in, and then sell you all this stuff through the loot market or whatever it is. Well, I, I've heard this argument made, and I, I'm curious what you guys think about it. Now, would you be willing to, like, let's say we got got rid of all of the, you know, the the quick. Think unlock stuff where you spend like two or three bucks here and there, mm-hmm. like all of that shit. Like, you'd be willing to get rid of that 
to if they instead increase like instead of like a game being sixty dollars, like it's eighty dollars, but you get the full game, like and there's none of that shit in it. That way, people are getting paid more, like for putting in time making the game, you know, just a little bit. But versus mm. the constant, you know, annoyance of all of that stuff, I've heard that argument made. It's I would say it's a really hard sell because for probably like the beginning of time, the games have always been around like the fifty, sixty dollar mark. This is true. Be it like two hours of gameplay, three hours of game, like whatever it is. So I think if if that was to transition into that type of uh, marketing where, hey, we're going to sell this game for 80 bucks and all our games are going to be 80 bucks, but you won't have DLC. But mm -hmm. this is just how it is. And then it, it kind of makes you wonder, like, am I going to spend a couple of days paycheck on a game? I know. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> the way it is now, like, with, like, DLC and all these apps, end up spending that, maybe even more, you know, on a game anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it just depends if it's a game that you love and actually want all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I know I fall into the trap a lot of times where games, they will release like what's considered a deluxe edition version yeah. of the game. Mm -hmm. So like Red Dead Redemption, for example, I bought that deluxe edition for pretty much when it, what it comes down to was like five pieces of additional content. Mm -hmm. And that was what they yeah. considered, you know, the deluxe edition, and you know, plus a physical map, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies, I feel like, are already doing that, but it's only a few pieces of items that you get, and then you still are stuck in, you know, paying for, for what you want to get. But Right. <laughs> yeah, we're just now stuck in this way. And there are still companies that actually will make the full game and have no DLC at all, but I can imagine that they're mm -hmm. taking the hit for that. But yeah. at least they're doing it out of, you know, the kindness of their heart and not trying to, you know, constantly reel you in with like, hey, here comes DLC. Get some new kicks for your character. <laughs> <laughs> Buy these Tostino pizza rolls so you can get a new shirt. Yeah, like I I'm cool <laughs> with... <laughs> oh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with like in-game purchases being purely cosmetic. Like it offers nothing except yeah, you looking dope while you're playing that. the game. Yeah, I think it depends really on what kind of game it is. Like, if you have a free-to-play MMO, it's one thing. Like, DCUO would be my example, where mm -hmm. they have to release new content regularly, and every once in a while, release a new power set for a new role. But mm -hmm. doesn't take anything away from the older ones. Like, if you if you go on DCUO and you, you want to be a healer, right. you have sorcery and nature available to you right off the bat. You don't have to pay anything for them you know, eight years in or eight or nine years into the game, they're still two of the best healing powers in the game. Mm -hmm. All the all the DLC ones that you have to pay for that have come along over the years, they're good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, some of them are really good, but, you know, you still get really good stuff at the base instead of having to, like, pay for better stuff. So it's kind of like a side grade. So kind of like the, you know, uh, cosmetic <laughs> thing in a sense. <laughs> the honorable company of the <laughs> <laughs> These are all tweets no, from the people. IRL. Yeah. <laughs> all these tweets of people being so pissed at Alien Isolation. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I don't blame them. I mean, it's. I, I think it's one of those things we just. We're going to have to accept it as part of gaming moving mm -hmm. forward. Because there's we... no stopping it. Right. There's no stopping it. It's going to be there forever and it's going to make us sad. <laughs> For a long time. So, speaking of things not working out the way we'd like, how about that PlayStation Classic? Okay, let's. <laughs> oh, let's grab the pitchforks and torches, kids. We're about to fuck something up here. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, Tony's got some story time with this. <laughs> oh, man. Not even so much story time, it's just that I. I need to start learning as a consumer to uh, to stop giving in and buying things like that. Um, I was so impressed with the Nintendo consoles that they released. Um, that's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> right, and that's how you're supposed to do it. And I, so with that, you know, I kind of hopped on the, the hype train of, you know, wanting to get that piece of nostalgia and, you know, pre-ordered it. Uh, I was super excited when it came out. And then, you know, the week of, you start hearing all these terrible, terrible things about it. 
Mm. And, you know, I thought, well, you know, regardless, it's still kind of a cool collector's piece to get. So, um, you know, I got in, picked it up from Best Buy. You see there's like piles and piles of these things. Like yeah. people have either returned them or they haven't that picked them up. Either. So that's like the first red flag. You go home, um, like you read all these just, again, terrible, terrible things that these games haven't been optimized and they're using like European versions of the games and... Mm -hmm. um so then literally within the first i think it was the first two or three weeks um i hadn't opened it yet and there was a price drop down to i want to say 79 it was like 20 dollars less so i was like well hell i haven't opened my thing yet i'll just return it so i did bought a new one at the new price and then i <laughs> shit you not within the next two weeks they did like the next price drop which was the like the one that it's at right now the 60 dollar one so what do I do? I return it, and instead of picking up another one, like a dumbass, I didn't get it. And, you know, maybe if it gets down to like a $30, $40 price point, I'll pick it up, but it's just ridiculous. The, don't worry. I'll never do that again, I don't think. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll, we'll solve that problem for you at some point, Tony. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's I'm not a gonna lot. Lie. Go ahead, Vox. Go ahead. I was going to say, <laughs> go ahead again. It's on you. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like I was I was intrigued myself. Like I said, like I have like no real need for these things, but I do like them. Like I like the right. packaging of these like little mini consoles and stuff. And when mm -hmm. they announced this one, I was excited about it. But at the same time, like just like the NES and the Super NES one, I'm like I, I was like I'm like I'm gonna wait to see what what's said about it first. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I don't have a direct need for it. It would just be, you know, something fun to have. And um, with the uh, PS1 Classic, I'm totally glad I didn't buy that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, where do we even start with it? I mean, like Tony said, there were unoptimized versions, European versions. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that the emulator they stuck in there wasn't even one of their own. Yeah. Right. Like if you if you think I'm joking and you have a PS1 Classic, go get a USB keyboard right now, plug it into your PS1 Classic, and hit Escape. Let me know what you think of that emulation menu. <laughs> um, go ahead and change the settings while you're at it. It might run a little better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Damn. you know, <laughs> from my perspective, you know the the list for it, the the game list for it wasn't anything that made me go holy shit i need to get one of these yeah mm -hmm. you know there, there are a few games on, like there are good choices on there all together don't get me wrong but like how many times do i need to own final fantasy 7 yeah <laughs> yeah like battle arena toshinden okay yeah i'm down for that mm -hmm. um but something what there was another one on there that i was like why do you want me to run down? I got the game list. Yeah, go ahead and run down. down. The list. Yeah, go they got Battle down. Arena, Toshinden, Final mm -hmm. Fantasy VII, Intelligent yeah. Cube, Jumping Flash, that Metal Gear too. Solid, Doctor Driller, uh, Ridge Racer Type Four, uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut, the European Edition of War Frame Rate, so you can't speed on it. Go ahead. <laughs> Revelations <laughs> Persona, Super Puzzle Street Fighter Two Turbo. Tekken game. 3, which is another one of the uh, PAL versions, ran like shit. Oh, was it? Yep. Uh, a lot of people it. were pissed about how Tekken 3 was running. Uh, Wild Arms, Pool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Roger. Theft Auto, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Siphon Filter, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, and Twisted Metal. Hmm. So For overall... North American ones, anyway. Overall, it's a pretty solid list. Like there, there's some, better. it could have been better. There is some great <laughs> stuff on there. Some of it is held back by it being the European version, like Tekken Three and Resident Evil. You can't really do a fighting game with missing frames. Yeah, yeah, no, it just doesn't work that way. You you can't. I mean, uh, obviously you can, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be the best that it could be. You know, for something like Resident Evil, it's a little bit different, but the same time it's like nope you know this is what 2018 when this thing's really step it up guys mm -hmm. and think, then there are just <clears throat> I, was, I think the biggest uh game that a lot of people were like really upset about being missing from that list 
was Symphony of the Night. Oh yeah, that should have been on there. 100%. That should have been like the first fucking game that they put on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Konami had their own ideas. Yeah. The Symphony of Night and Rondo of Blood's probably why they didn't put it on there. And they I mean, didn't do uh, they didn't do any of the Crash Bandicoot games. But I'm like, see, yeah, they didn't why? they didn't do any Crash games. But I'm assuming because they just put out that trilogy, so they want yeah. people to buy that. Right. Yeah, the reignited That's trilogy. Insane. That's true. And, uh, I would have put like being a big Twisted Metal fan myself. Like, I loved the first Twisted Metal, but if it were yeah. up to me to put a Twisted two. Metal game, it would have been two. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would. Yeah, I'm there with you on that one. I, w- I would have put two on there. Then, I mean, the other one, the ones that just confuse me, like, absolutely confuse me, especially are, like, Jumping Flash and Intelligent Cube. I own Intelligent Cube. I own the Japanese version of it because when it came out, it wasn't released in the States, as far as I know. Like it was a it was a European it was a PAL in Japan only release. It's a good mm-hmm. game, but why the fuck is it on there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are these are all supposed to be games that like rev like was like like the definition like, of the console. That's yeah. not a game I think of. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a good game and I really like it, but no. <laughs> you know, they had some weird choices for the classic, but just <laughs> like with the um, the Nintendo classic. The uh, the modding community came in the clutch and fixed a whole bunch of stuff. So now you can put whatever games you want on the classic. <laughs> it's this just so true. disappointing. It's just uh, it, you know, any excitement that I would have had, you know, going forward for like a, a PS2 classic release or anything like that has been kind of just ruined <laughs> by this disaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of curiosity, Tony. Now, out of the times. That- you had it in your possession. Did you ever actually <laughs> open the box? Sure didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, so you, you didn't notice that there was uh, no power supply given with this. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to go into detail on the, that one. Uh, story time? Was, mm-hmm. What? Yeah, it, yeah. it did not include a power supply. No, you, you, you just Yeah, that was another flaw. <laughs> they <laughs> they like used the USB Diablo reasoning thing. before even Diablo was a thing. It's like, what, do you guys not have power <laughs> supply? <laughs> oh my god! No. Wow. So okay, this is a dumb question then. Uh, I don't even want to. Keys, we were fooled. We were fooled, Keys. What the hell? <laughs> oh, <sighs> so basically, no power supply. You know, PAL versions of uh, most games. Not necessarily yeah. the best. Like not a terrible list of games, but could have been a lot better. It's just it was yeah. just like the biggest cash grab for a holiday season I've ever seen Sony do. Yeah, and there there are literally cheaper, more effective ways to get exactly the same thing and more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm. You guys can research it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm not going to talk about it on the show. No, you, you all got Google, right? Got I'm going to talk. <laughs> well, all right. I have goggles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just look up Raspberry Pi. You can figure out the rest, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. Not, not condoning piracy in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but um, Raspberry Pi that has like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support and. Mm-hmm does basically everything this does but you can actually put a lot more games on it and you can tweak it to look better and play better mm-hmm. and you can use your ps4 controller and mm-hmm. i have one of those like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and how much how much did it set you back like what 50 like, bucks 50 bucks maybe dude. yeah i got yeah. a nice little enclosure for it so when it gets hot when i'm playing that super hardcore 64 <laughs> <laughs> so for for half of what it originally was, and even ten dollars mm. less, which is probably more than what the shipping would be, you can make your own PS1 classic. It doesn't even stop there. You can put other shit on it too. You know, 64, any mm-hmm. NES, SNES, whatever you want. Game Gear, Master System. Although I'm pretty sure I'm literally the only person that has ever played a Master System in the US. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Douche Loader's got a good point, too. Your PS3 is a pretty effective PS1 classic. Mine is, too, man. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's why it's still sitting on the shelf. I'm never getting rid of it. Yeah, I still have <laughs> my PS3 also. Arcade game. Mm-hmm. It's a good system. I, 
It is. It's wonderful. I mean, I, like I said, I've still got the PS, uh, the X Men Arcade game on there that you can't even download anymore. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. I will yeah. still never forgive myself for lo- losing the reshelled Turtles in Time. Oh, dude, that's. <laughs> mm. I wanted to buy that game, but at the time, never had the money for it. I it was don't necessarily regret it now, but I mean, <laughs> I've come to terms with the fact I'll never get my hands on it. Mm-hmm. I think I have the demo for it on there. Mm-hmm. But, there you go. That's something. Yeah, that's something. So overall, PS1 Classic gets a price cut because we just it, didn't had it coming. Yeah. And, noted, and noted that this price cut, it, it hadn't even been out of... It came out in oh, December. Geez. It yeah. came out in December, and it... it it's already, already a price cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like, was terrible. You could, you could probably... You, you could probably go out and buy a PS1, like an actual PS1, and this entire list of games <laughs> for less than what they're charging for this thing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah, totally I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, when you get into stuff like Jumping Flash, you might hit a high price point because it's a cult classic, which that was the other one that I was confused about. It's like, there are like five people on the planet that remember this game. Why did you put this on here? Yeah. This mm-hmm. isn't really a draw except for people <laughs> like my brother. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad game. Don't get me wrong. It's a good little platformer, but, you know, first person platforming in the early days of 3D gaming. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least it's not Bubsy 3D. So, how bad, like, Ugh. thinking ahead to the future now, like, hmm. do you think because of how terrible this went that they would even attempt to do, like, a PS2 classic? And if they were uh, to attempt it, like, because of how bad this went, do you think people would even give it the. T- even if they did do um... it right. Like, do you think people are so burned by this that they're like, just fuck it? I, I think for the if they did a PS2 classic, they'd have to pick and choose very carefully what they put on it. Yeah. Uh, however, I don't think it's something that's going to happen just for the fact that PS2 emulation itself is so hit or miss. Yeah. That it's so hard to get right. That yeah. it's so hard to make function the way that an actual PS2 would. Like, they'd be better off just re-releasing a PS2 with a hard drive in it and, and ISOs of all of them. Yeah, don't knock Airblade, bro. <laughs> I like that game. Yeah, it would kind of be the same reason with Nintendo because they already came out saying that even though, like, 64 and all those other systems are, you know, on their mind, it's not a big uh, concern because, one, that's, you know, emulation would be hard to do for it. But yeah. the price of it, like, would you actually yeah. go out and buy a two hundred dollar classic? Oh fuck no! Of the N sixty four, no. Or of any, because like, like it, there's no way they would sell something like that for a hundred bucks or hundred fifty. No. Maybe a hundred fifty. No. That'd be pushing it. But, I don't like, even think the N sixty four's got a, like a big enough library of decent games to warrant it. Like, like twenty yeah. games in the library that are actually good. The only, like I've always said that the N64 is never aged. The only things that are still reasonably worth playing are like the actual Nintendo titles yeah. and First party. Like, the wrestling games. So what, you're going to have like Mario, two Zelda games, a couple Mario parties, oh, Mario. Five, five wrestling games. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, those wrestling games were amazing though. Yeah, yeah. The two um, wrestling games were really bomb. They're doing PS2 classics, and then San Andreas would be a huge selling point. Yeah, I think actually, I think if they did a PS2 one, all three of those would be a huge. Oh draw. yeah, definitely. Like all three of the GTAs. Well, let, I mean, that it... alone is you know dozens yeah. of hours for each game. I hmm. mean, shit, they could get away with just like putting on Vice City. I preferred Vice City over San Andreas personally, but I like Vice City. But yeah, I, I put. I think no, I beat GTA three. <clears throat> definitely beat Vice City. Oh, you're one of those people that actually played the story in GTA. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're not alone, Ian. You're not alone. Wow, Tony. And hello, <laughs> Hooked. My favorite books. Feels bad. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, pretty much disaster. Absolute disaster. Um, yeah. And I'm very curious to see if this is ever moves out of meme territory for PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Tony. Tony's so upset. 
Yeah, I would be too if I bought the same fucking yeah. box. Nothing There's times. only so many times you can return something without getting like a resentment towards it. So yeah, I, I yeah, agree with it. One of those things. Now it's now it's just sitting on Tony's coffee table and he walks by it every day, glaring at it, going, "You fucking son of a bitch! I hate you." <laughs> <laughs> if I still had it, that's exactly what. I- but. It seems like that the end, like like the last half of 2018, was just all of these big companies trying to outdo each other and how bad they can mess up. Oh, like, big dick battle! Like Blizzard, <laughs> Blizzard with Diab- yeah. Diablo Immortal, and then the whole um, Fallout 76 issue, even with the bags and oh, all man, that stuff. And then, Fallout. and then this PS1 Classic comes. Out. It's just a series of terrible things, one after another. <laughs> it's like, Snicket oh, like, has got to be involved. In we this. can do worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of segues in the next one really nice. I think. Oh yeah, Bungie outdid Activision pretty mm-hmm. well. Yeah, seeing as they uh, officially announced that they're going to be separating themselves from Activision's publishing, they're going to be publishing on their own, which is really awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, we don't know the the exact details because we're not involved. Late breaking news. Let's speculate. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So if you read the article, pretty much what it says is we've gotten like the basic gist that I got from it was, hey, we've gotten big enough. You know, our britches fit. We're not too big for them. We're going to publish our stuff ourselves. And this can lead to a lot of good things. This can lead to um, Bungie being able to do whatever the hell they want with Destiny, considering they're getting the rights to it mm-hmm. as they should. Mm-hmm. Um so they can expand it, add new game modes, they can add, they can do whatever they want. It's their property. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they don't screw it up. And I'm hoping all the stumbling that they did in the first two years was just because of Activision. Now, on the flip side, why they left, aside from just getting big enough to be able to do it themselves, there's speculation going around. Maybe it was the microtransactions. Maybe they didn't like the way Activision was trying to handle them. Maybe they didn't like the way, you know, Activision was calling shots. And mm-hmm. that's probably closer to what happened. I mean, it's probably a little bit of both. You know, without actually being involved, there's no way to know. But yeah, I, I think. Feel like- I, mean, I think it was a good true. move that they joined in the first place because Bungie was kind of falling off a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, the the, yeah. the big boy. Halo carried them for quite a few years, but after oh, that, yeah. they didn't really yeah. have anything too big. And then, yeah, Uncle Destiny came along. <laughs> it's like, hello, Kermy. Uh, it's like, you know, Ian and I were saying before, or like Ian was saying before the show when we were talking. Um, you know, Destiny, was, the original Destiny, the first one, was just supposed to be a game that they mm-hmm. could release Destiny, and that's it. They build on it, expand it, and evolve it for until the game dies. Yeah. Then they went and released Destiny 2. <laughs> and everybody looked at it, and everybody was like, what the fuck is this? And then, like, all the hardcore Destiny guys I know, um, my, my buddy Finn Freak and his whole crew, they're all, like, super hardcore Destiny 2 players. Like, that's their thing. They do the raids. They, you know, speed run, do the speed runs and stuff. Um... They, you know, they're all looking at it going, this is like Destiny 1 year one. There's <laughs> not much here. <laughs> oh. like, but there's a two at the end. <laughs> there's a two at the end. <laughs> Disaster. And, yeah. And sitting with them while they, you know, over the months and listening to them talk about it, like, they're, you know, they're like, I love this game, but the the things that they're doing right now are just are hindering the game Mm -hmm. like bad balance patches bad content patches not adding enough or adding stuff that nobody nobody cares about right you know so maybe this will be Bungie's chance to really come out swinging come out come out of the gate and just say look it's our game now and we're gonna fucking blow your minds yeah. yeah, I'm actually really excited to see what they're gonna do. Yeah. yeah, me too. Everything that I've read about this, like they, the one detail that keeps like popping up was just like how all the employees at Bungie were like popping champagne, like they were literally <laughs> having a party in their office, like the second they found out that this was happening. 
Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and that speaks, yeah, that think... speaks volumes because it's like, damn, how much was Activision like in their way when developing yeah. and yeah, doing all really. this? Mm -hmm. Like, what was it in Forsaken? You got a couple, like what, a couple new raids, maybe some new Nightfalls and a bow and arrow. Cool, I can be Space Ninja Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, that would be amazing, but... <laughs> But you Destiny, know, it's its own little cult. Like, they're, like I think people that play oh, yeah. Destiny are religious to that game. Mm -hmm. They know the it's lore inside and out. Like, oh yeah. Like that, I got, I was, I yeah. was late to it. Like the first one, I play. I didn't play it until like pretty much everything. Like all the DLC and stuff was already out. And then I just was glued to that game. Like, like I'd play it before work, go to work, come home, and that's what I do until I passed out in my chair. Mm -hmm. Like, I was all into it, but then I did everything that I possibly could, completely forgot about it, and then they put out <laughs> Destiny 2, and I didn't play it until Blizzard released it for free, like, a couple months ago, like, the base game, and I played that, and I was like, I was like, this is a really good game. Like, I like what I'm doing, but I'm not going to buy the DLC. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think 40 dollars is necessarily a price point that Forsaken should be at. Yeah, dude, Personally. it's expensive, huh? <laughs> it is. Even yeah. when it's on sale, like I got friends that are like, oh, hey, it's on sale. I'm like, yeah, bitch, but it's still 30 bucks. I ain't paying 30 bucks for that. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're going to do something like that, on. if you're going to do something like that, then you need to go back to, like, the original idea where, like, it's just mm -hmm. the base game. There's not going to be a Destiny 3. And when you put out an expansion, you, it's got to be, like, an entire game's worth of content, you yeah. know, for that type of like it's got to be a major, major fucking expansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, if you know, as far as there not being a Destiny three, if Valve picks them up, you can guarantee there will never be a third one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Damn before, before we go any further, though, uh, Ginger. Ginger said they yeah, I feel like with the status Bungie has, it would be a good idea for them to create a story-based shooter rather than this late game rate MMO thing, something in the style of Last of Us or Mad Max. That would be amazing. That Especially would be amazing. with their writing. Because and it continues with because the story from Destiny, although short, is enthralling to watch. It is the story for Destiny is really good. Yeah. I do like the story for Destiny. My favorite part was when that one guy died. <laughs> His name Clyde. Clyde, yeah. Spoiler! <laughs> it's a Nolan North character. Nobody should care. Oh. I don't know. Everybody made such a big deal out of it on uh, on Twitter when Twitch tweeted about. It. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Spider uh, tag. That's, okay. that's just a Nolan North character. It's not like it's an alias to Fex's character. Yeah. So I'm curious too, and this is something. Um, as like Ian kind of mentioned, I have not been a huge like Destiny player. Um, I think I've picked up like both games when they were on sale for like five dollars. Never gone yeah. into them. Has this type of situation happened in the past before? Like where, like I, the thing that comes to mind is like Hitman when they announced that they were breaking from off from like Square Enix, right? Or mm -hmm. is that like the similar situation? When has this happened in the past? Uh, it probably happens more often than you think. Like, a developer just gets to the point where they probably feel like they've been under the thumb of their publisher for too long, and they're like, you know what, I'm sick of your shit, I'm big enough to take care of myself, I don't need you anymore, bye. <laughs> and Bungie, Bungie is definitely, I think Bungie is past that point. I don't necessarily think they've needed Activision for a little while. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe after destiny 2 launched because it was a bit of a stumbling and there was a huge player base fall off but mm. i mean the player base that's consistent is consistent they are fucking dedicated yeah like my, like my buddy fen freak and his friends those guys that's what they play sometimes you know they'll play other stuff too you know pubg or um sea of thieves or whatever they'll they'll play that but it always they always come back to destiny too mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's a loyal following yeah yeah if, if they have that loyal file following they've got nothing to worry about and you know when developers reach that point where they can do that 
you know, it, it happens. You don't always hear about it too much, but like in big cases like this, and you know, um, the developers for Hitman ditching uh, Squeenix. <laughs> oh man i agree trademarking that as um, of 2003 <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's, it you just know, yeah it I'm, I'm excited for for bungie and i it makes me like think of other like developers that would be maybe better off doing the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. if, if they had the means to do so. So it's a it's an interesting yeah. story. Mm -hmm. Blizzard's um, one of them. Interesting to see what happens. Yeah, Blizzard needs to get the fuck out of town while they can. Yeah. That's also something else that I read about this is um, as it stands, they're still going to keep Destiny Two up on BattleNet with Blizzard, even though this is right. happening. So mm -hmm. like. There's no gonna be. There's not gonna be like a another like you don't have to like re-download stuff on like another. With like, okay. You know, it, it's staying where it's at. Yeah. So at least there's that. I, I want to. This actually, this is something I was talking with Pat about the other day. Um, after this news broke, I, and he was like, if they don't put it on like Epic Games Launcher or even Steam, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Because. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what their percentage is having it on the Blizz app, but if it's not, you know, something comparable, then it'd be shooting themselves in the foot. It also would be limiting their player base because, you know, for us, how many games do we have on Uplay that we actually play regularly? <laughs> I don't want to fucking open Uplay just to play it. <laughs> Let me just yeah. open it from Steam and Steam can open Uplay. And That's legit the only game I have on Uplay. <laughs> <laughs> just Rainbow Six Siege, dude. I own way too many Tom Clancy games for that not to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gin and, you know, Ginger brings up another good point. As far as the player bases go, you know, the Old Republic is the same. A few big updates, but, you know, they have a dedicated player base. And it's a really good game. If you haven't played it, you should check it out. The only problem is it's on Origin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which I'm pretty sure there's like three and a half people in the world that still use Origin. <laughs> Man, this year is gonna yeah. gonna suck because now Epic Games launcher is out, and a lot mm -hmm. of um, Division mm -hmm. already announced that the Division's Division two gonna be two. on yeah. Epic Games. Like, come on, yeah, man. I saw that. Yeah, I would. You know, if uh, if it's at least for sale on Steam, I would rather buy it through Steam and just have it open the Epic launcher. <laughs> 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 Look, I know Origin has your Sims on it. It's also got <laughs> Mass Effect multiplayer stuff on it. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, have you guys probably so Dead by Daylight? They released a game this past few months called Last Year, and that was on that was a like oh, a Discord right. exclusive. Yeah, and I really feel like. And I've read articles about it that it kind of cut the legs off of the game because it was only available through that platform. And they're releasing it later on for Steam, but is it too late to kind of, you know, pick that up? I don't know. But awesome. that's a good question, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. It's hard to tell because, you know, I do think releasing something on Discord that's primarily seen as a, you know, or social app. or chat, one of those, it's nobody's first thought when they think you know man i want to go check out this new game they're going to either open steam they're going to open origin or epic games launcher right and or well not so much blizz app but um nobody is going to go i'm going to check discord for the new releases it's like you happen <laughs> to stumble across the new releases when you turn discord on to get on it yeah i agree with that so hamstringed it probably quite a bit hopefully releasing it on steam will will breathe some life into the game and maybe help it out because didn't dead by daylight have a pretty rocky start tony um i would say it was actually it was a pretty strong start and then um there was kind of like a lapse i would say maybe a year in. and mm. i don't even know what happened but it really has like picked up to be one of the most consistent like consistently watch games and also like a very consistent player base yeah. it's doing uh, really really well now yeah. yeah 
Like, but, um, you know, like, it's kind of like Friday the 13th, where, you know, that opened up. That's a completely different story. That's, that's quality of game. Um, but, unfortunately, last year didn't even have that. It's, you know, it kind of, it was dead on arrival for the most part. So, yeah. That's about right. Which also leads us well into our next topic. Unless oh, anybody's yeah. got anything else yeah. to add to it. The big kahuna here. We have the big mm. kahuna. Speaking of Dead on Arrival, and this isn't going to be a shot at Nintendo, we'll, we'll build up to where this is going. Nintendo possibly leaving the home console market. Don't worry, I'll let you catch your breath. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think Nintendo leaving the console market would really affect their bottom line that much, honestly. No, I, mean, I don't think it will. They haven't had a major Smash console since the Wii, and even that was only for, what, half uh, a year or so? The <laughs> Wii was... It, I, I registered the Wii as an extended period fad. Yeah. <laughs> it, landed, it lasted longer than most fads, but it was still a oh, fad. Yeah. Hmm. And then they had the Wii U, which... Flopped. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it was basically a, what, a more powerful Wii with a controller that wasn't an asshole. <laughs> and then they they fucking knocked it out of the park with the Switch, and that's the thing. The Switch is exactly why I don't think Nintendo needs to worry about leaving the console market. I feel mm -hmm. like they could leave the console market and be perfectly fine. They've dominated the handheld market for over 30 years, or close yep. to 30 years. They don't need a horse in the console race, especially with something like the Switch that's both. You dock it, it's a console. You pick it up, you put the Joy-Cons on, it's a fucking portable. It's a mm -hmm. it's a handheld. Yeah, well that's like what I've been saying like back yeah. when when like the Wii fad, if you will, was slowly starting to go away. Like I've always said that like they've been so great with their handhelds, like yeah. they could just stop doing big consoles and only do handhelds. They'll be yeah. successful. And then lo and behold, we get the Switch which essentially mm -hmm. is a handheld, but a console at the same time. So yeah. it, was, it was perfect. I, th I think, you know, going on that with them sticking to the, co the handheld market, I think it speaks a lot to where they want to go and where it, they could be headed with the fact that the Let's Go Pokemon series was released on the Switch, which technically is a console, and the Let's Go series is a remake of older Pokemon games, which even even the remakes still got released on handhelds. You've mm -hmm. got the spin-off games on consoles, you know, your Pokemon Coliseum, Stadium, Gale of Darkness XD, your Snap. Uh, Pokemon Snap. Yeah. <laughs> All the spin-offs got chucked over to the console, because who gives a shit? <laughs> I yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had some spin-offs on handhelds, like the Mystery Dungeon games. Uh, but a majority of your mainline Pokemon games, all of them wound up on handhelds and, mm. you know, even the remakes, you know, like uh, Soul Silver and Heart Gold. They, mm. you know, remakes, but they, they were released on handhelds. Same thing with Let's Go. I think it's them bridging the gap of saying, you know what, we're done with the console business. The last two consoles were flops. Let's stick to what we're really good at. And mm -hmm. that's tying back into the dead on arrival thing, leaving our competitors literally dead on arrival. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. how many how many handhelds came along over the last couple decades that tried to compete with them? You know, you got the Atari Lynx, the Sega Game Gear, you had your uh, PlayStation Vita, your your PlayStation Portable, peace. yeah, yeah, rip everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> What was the other the Nokia Engage? I guess if you want to count. Yeah, that I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, nobody, you know, people had, you know, other companies had trouble standing up to Nintendo in the console market, but you know, it was just trouble. You know, Sony came along, and at first it was like, oh, you're probably going to get beat by Nintendo, and then Sony flipped flipped tables on them, and you know, came out doing really well. Whereas Nintendo was like, no, they kicked the table back at him and took the legs out from under him when the Vita came out in the PSP. <laughs> Nintendo wasn't having any of that bullshit. <laughs> so, I don't think, yeah, the Vita did deserve better. <clears throat> I just, I, I don't think that Nintendo's really going to suffer from moving to the handheld market. They never have. They've dominated it for decades. And they always will. <laughs> unless something major happens. And I don't think anything major enough is going to happen. Microsoft is smart enough not even put a fucking horse in the race. Yeah, that's always a smart thing. Out of it. 
Like, yeah. if you're gonna compete, you gotta be damn sure you're gonna compete, or just not do it at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, um, my... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna read a little thing from the article, but go ahead. It was, well, I was just saying, like, like, as long as Microsoft and Sony are putting out consoles, I don't see why Nintendo wouldn't keep doing the same. Like, Mm -hmm. They get like every time like the the ingenuity that goes into the consoles vastly different than the other two. So <laughs> like as long as they can they can keep that up like that's yeah. fine. But like yeah. I if they were to ever not do a console like timing would be everything. Like they'd have to do it at the exact right time for it to work. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the part I, I was gonna read is actually gonna answer your question. Um. So. Furukawa said that he'd like to increase their mobile output as well as continue to pursue some licensing agreements with its characters. I'm thinking about little ways we can reduce that kind of instability, he said. I'd like to increase the amount of games on smartphones that have a continuous stream of revenue. And we're also dabbling in theme parks and movies. Different ways to have our characters to be part of everyday life. I'm anticipating a strong synergy like that. So they're kind of looking at the Disney aspect. How Disney is a big part of everyone's life, including children. And yeah. that's a good way for Nintendo to go about it because that'd be fucking sick, dude. Nintendo Land, I want to go. Yeah, I've been I've been keeping an eye on that that whole project. That that would be badass. I I could care less about the movies, but I understand <laughs> the need for it. Um, but uh, the theme park idea, dude, I'd go on a Zelda ride and a fucking hard, dude, a fucking Metroid oh, yeah. ride. Oh, oh Metroid oh. Prime. <laughs> Metroid Prime Rail Shooter ride would be Oh yeah, like a Men in Black type ride, but with like Metroid. That. Oh, oh dude. Or, that'd be dope. Or the toy was it Toy Story in Disney World? Oh, oh yeah. No. That's another dude. good one. Uh because even now, um Nintendo has been doing little pop-ups. Um mm. I, I think there's one in San Francisco where it's just pure Nintendo. Nintendo gear, Nintendo accessories, merchandise. I want to go to one of those, but they don't have them here. Look at Crimson popping off with one of our new alerts. Oh, yeah. We have some new branded alerts for our page, as you saw. That's right. Thanks, Crimson. Rebooting and rebranding. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, say Nintendo does stop doing consoles. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Like, how, like... Oh, I'll... All they need to do is just the handheld market, man. That's all they need. Well, I've often thought that they should do because you know nintendo's not going to want to work with steam they're not going to want to work with epic they need their own version of that because then that way the biggest argument that i've ever always heard from people about nintendo is like if we're not talking about the games themselves like for you know nintendo versus sony or microsoft like if we're just leaving the actual power inside what's or what's inside the console Nintendo right. always comes in last. Yeah. Um, now, if you were to do something where Nintendo had their own thing, like a Steam or something like that, then you kind of don't have that problem anymore. Because then you're building PC games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then you have an entire back catalog of Nintendo games that are now available on, like, you know, PC. Whereas people who just never, ever, ever really wanted to buy a Nintendo console because they're always spending their money on a PlayStation or a mic, you know, an or Xbox something or something, else. something yeah. else, you know, now here you go. Now you have access to it. Hmm. Yeah. But then that also brings up the argument as to how many fucking times are they going to make us buy the same game? <laughs> I'm not paying five bucks for Resident Evil Climbers <laughs> Nintendo. I'm sorry. That's the thing, though, that but, like. People, when they want something, Nintendo is not good at like giving it to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're good at giving you a ROM dump that they took from a site they shut down on their NES Classic. But... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but oh god, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, fun side fact: there is actually a sale on Humble Bundle for Nintendo games. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, so now is they're offering the digital sponsored stream. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't worry, Nintendo. I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're offering digital codes through Humble Bundle, yeah. which I think is pretty cool. Nice. Nice. But That's I think awesome. it's also smart it's... for people that don't like know about that. Yeah, oh my God, Tony! No. Thank you. 
kind of fair. It's it's a big thing, I think, that Nintendo is actually doing. Damn, those, those alerts look amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a big thing. I think it's really cool that Nintendo actually said, yeah, you know what, we'll put some of these on sale. Because Nintendo never puts anything on sale, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, really cool that they're... Um, that they're doing that, that they're working with Humble Bundle for that. Nintendo awesome. kind of just like the, they do some they do some uncool things, but every they, they're slowly like, okay, we're gonna do this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you that, know, now they're gonna do they're gonna do two more things to piss us off, and then they're gonna do something cool again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're you're probably not wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing about Nintendo though is they they are literally the embodiment of slow and steady wins the race like yeah they do shit that pisses us off sometimes because it's you know you feel like they're two generations behind <laughs> you know we got friend codes and you know weird oh weird <laughs> ways to, to try to like play on the fucking cell phones oh. yeah and you know they they do all this stuff but the fact is nintendo's a powerhouse they can afford to do this because they're still going to come out on top yeah, mm -hmm. you know, in in whatever way they want to. Because mm -hmm. yeah, like, the thing with watching them, oof. the thing with Nintendo is that they've been around for so long that even if like the younger generation has no idea who they are, their parents know who they are, and that's how they yeah. get introduced to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, like in Ian's case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, you I mean, tell us. Like, yeah, tell us, tell so us with my eight-year-old daughter, like I I bought her an NES Classic just. So she have because she always sees me playing all the old. That's what I do, <laughs> and um, yep. you know. But she has all the you know. She has her tablet. She has all like the new things for that you know. And like I got you know some newer consoles and stuff like that. But that's all she wants to play is is the older games. And you know, so I got her the NES Classic. She loves it. And uh, a couple weeks ago, it uh, miraculously just got the entire NES library added to it. So, uh, <laughs> I wonder how that yes. happened. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. And, um, <laughs> so weird. Uh, Did you get the DLC? Yeah. <laughs> so, can you replicate this with a PS1 classic? <laughs> she's been having a blast, like just going through all these other games. You know, she went from having like what the 30 games that are on there to like 700, 800 fucking games. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's like Christmas for her. I yeah. Know. But oh, it's oh, still yeah, fun. Yeah. Like, that's the thing, though. Like, that's amazing to me. It's like, how far games have come these days but yet people still want to play these like that that's a testament to time right there yeah mm -hmm. that people are still wanting to play their so know, nintendo games. nintendo knew what they were doing yeah yeah they knew they knew damn well what they were doing yeah i don't that's think awesome. um yeah, if, if they step away i don't think they're going to step away anytime soon like no. maybe no. maybe one more console but if when they do step away, Probably. I think they're perfectly fine because I'm down for some theme parks and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> now, now, would you... Um, Let's do it. Do you think it would be a full-on new console or are we just going to get like a pro Switch and then that'd be it? <laughs> I'm down for like something that's close to, a, to the Switch, but way higher end. Yeah. Yeah. Because hmm. they're still like not like they're being shady about like a like announcing a pro switch because they still want people to buy the original switch obviously yeah. so but, but yeah, it's still it's not in its infancy anymore but it's still relevant yeah yeah so they really hit it out of the park so, with that yeah like you know how long it's been since i've looked at a nintendo console and go god damn i need one of those yeah, yeah, dude, I save, man. GameCube. Yeah, the GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the uh, the announcement for the Switch, and I was just like, "What in the god awful fuck is this?" But then, <laughs> like, I just researched it, and the more and the more and more it came out, man. Like, I was one of those people. Like, day one when it came out, I was I was hunting it down, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, I you know had to go to GameStop many a times. Thankfully, my wife uh, was able to go to a GameStop like an hour before they opened when they're. Uh, delivery showed up and they only brought in five switches and she's the first one to grab one. Nice. So, <laughs> and I, I, I remember, I, yeah, I remember, you know, a couple months in the months following its release, um, you know, Mia and I would check our, our local game stops and see if we could find one for her uncle. 
and for like three months they were always sold out all three of them in the area mm-hmm. he's like god he eventually found one one of his one of his co-workers found one for him yeah it's been a while since a console came out and i was in the exact same like box says the last console i bought is ps3 that's a long time ago that is yeah. a super long time ago yeah last one i bought was a ps4 that's it's kind of hanging out over there now. <laughs> in shame. It, it's and, like, shamed. That's not true. The last console I bought was actually an OG Xbox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, being, we're being literal here. Yeah. And I mean, oh, let's, man. let's not overlook the the main reason everybody switch. It, come on, it's a full on console you can take. In- yeah, yeah, dude, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like I can play whenever the hell I want. If I'm going on a trip somewhere. I can play it. Mm-hmm. If I want to take yep. it to a friend's house, right. oh, it's super easy to take with you. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right, Archer. That's right, Jindy. Keep keep that flag flying high. <laughs> That's why I don't own a Switch. PC mustard face. Yes. <laughs> PC mustard face. That's fine. Kratos and Spider-Man are laughing at you. It's Hey man, I'm not knocking the PS4, man. I, I, I want to get it for those games. Yeah. But like, those are the only two games for the PS4 I could even fathom putting money towards. Well, I want to yeah. play God of War as well. Well, yeah, he, he said Kratos, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, The Last of Us 2. I always forget Last about of us. Uh, yeah. like Naughty yeah. Dog. Yeah. Well, apparently, Sony did too when they were putting games on the PS1 Classic, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Sony forgot a lot during that, but yeah. It's okay, mm-hmm. Sony. If you ever see this, just remember I'm teasing you because I love you. <laughs> I'm not. Get your shit together. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's check them off the list. Of oh, man. This has been a great show. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. What do you think, chat? This is the first Secret Levels podcast of 2019. Yeah. Still waiting on that arcade to come up soon. Yep, which should be Tuesday, I believe, isn't yep. it? Mm-hmm. What are we What are we playing on Tuesday? No, we'll figure that out. We have a list. Yeah, we, we have, have a list. list. We do. Yeah, also, real Thank quick, so for anyone in this chat who's watching, if you want to be the guest on the show, hit up Vox. He is our community manager. He handles all the scheduling, all that stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, some of you in the chat have contacted me already. Keys, I'm looking at you, homie. Uh, you are on the list. There is a waiting list. Yeah, there is forked. a waiting list, actually. Surprisingly, <laughs> which is amazing, but damn. <laughs> we, we are booked through March. Mm-hmm. Or into March, rather. Not through it, but into it. Um, but there is a list, and there is an order to it. So don't worry. Um, if you've contacted me about getting on the show, wanting to be on the show, showing interest... Um, there is a list and your name is on it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to be so. on the show specifically, but you know someone that might want to be on the show, bring them our way. Let Vox know. Tag yeah. them in a post yeah. on Twitter or something. Yeah. Tag me. Mm-hmm. I, I have an actual direct IV to Twitter that goes mm-hmm. right into my veins. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sustains yes. me. I haven't I haven't eaten in five years because that's how long oh, I have my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't actually a Pepsi, it's just Twitter in a can. (laughs) (laughs) All the tweets. All the tweets. (laughs) All the tweets. Totally not interested in anything else at all, I'm sure. I'm sure. We'll talk about that later. Pepsi. Pepsi. Just here for time. It is, though. Man. Any final so any final thoughts, guys? Um, who's streaming tonight? Anybody? Uh, I am. I'm Ooh, streaming. Got tonight. Ian streaming. Oh, perfect. That's right. Yeah, oh, you nice. guys. If, oh, yeah. if you want to see Ian knock the mouthpiece out of some stupid bastards, you should watch him. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a shit show tonight. I got to the first of the Bruiser <laughs> Brothers. Dude, he breaks your hand. That's what the. How are you supposed to play Punch Out with a broken hand? <laughs> well, no, I've seen fighters. I've seen boxers finish fights with dislocated shoulders. Oh man, mm, true. But if I don't thought by you switch. I'll think about it, Ginger. <laughs> but yeah, tonight think at uh, nine PM Eastern Standard, I'll be continuing on the quest to beat Super Punch Out. So Beautiful. join me if you wish. I will be there. I will Sick. be there late. I have to work. 
Ugh. Nah. Gross. Yeah, I'll be it's there a later. really... Yeah, it's just a really weird week at work because of a bunch of shit that doesn't even pertain to us, but... Mm -hmm. Basically, my schedule is exactly the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Which nice. is why I'm working this afternoon instead of this morning. Mm -hmm. I hate my life sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's our episode of... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We do appreciate it. Once again, check out everyone on screen. Yeah. yeah. You Thank you guys all for being here. Tell your job to quit itself, I wish. <laughs> if you need to know where to find us, if you've been paying close attention, you can see where to find us right under our beautiful faces. With uh, Right now on my screen, it's the Twitter logo. You can find us on Twitter that way. And uh, the Twitch one's mm -hmm. also there. The Twitch... The Twitch, Twitchy Twitch, Twitch. The, Twitch. The, Twitch. <laughs> the social medias. The, Yo, the no, you thank guys, you guys. Ginger, always. Crimson, Hooked, everybody else has been hanging out. We appreciate you guys, and uh, thank you for for hanging with us when we do these. So, yeah. mm -hmm. bye everyone. Bye.